Hello and welcome to Japanese from Zero. Course 2. Now I apologize that this is still book one, but it is a lot of work to remake that graphic and we're going to keep that one for a while. This is what should be there. Book 2, which is by the way, uh, about 50 pages more than book one. It's a lot more stuff. Let's get started. Today we're going to talk about something that is extremely important. Two very important things. We're going to talk about ex existence verbs and iru edu verbs. That's what we call them, iru edu verbs. And we're going to talk a little bit in the next few videos about the way verbs work in Japanese. We did a lot of this in uh, the, in the end of course one also, but uh, I want to drive some things home with you, okay? So uh, you do need to know all of the hiragana, and in the next lesson you'll hear me say you need to know the katakana. Not all of it, but you'll need to know some of it. But just to remind you that there is no more romaji if you already know the hiragana. Okay, only two new words are going to be taught. We're going to go right through them. It's iru and aru. These are the dictionary forms of the Japanese to be verbs. What's a to be verb? It means is am, are. And in this case, iru and aru can both mean have. In English, this is only one concept. It's the to be verb, okay? And it means, like I said, is, am, are, and have. But in Japanese, the to be verb is split into two verbs, okay? Iru is for things that are alive. If you say, for example, I have a girlfriend, or, uh, where is the, the cat is over there. You're going to use the to be verb iru. Okay. I'm just laying it out. You don't have to remember it yet. We're going to, we're going to remind you of this over and over again. So iru is for animate objects, things that are alive. Okay. Aru is for things like Coca-Cola cans and iPhones and these awesome scissors that keep showing up in this videos. Okay. These things are aru. Okay. I have scissors, I would have to say aru. Remember, in English, we have one version of have and one version of to be, but Japanese splits it. It's common when you learn a language that sometimes it's not always a one-to-one -one thing. Sometimes one language does it three different ways. It does three things. I mean, even think about English. We, we say is, am, are. Three ways to say is, am, are. But Japanese is just des, right? Well, now we have a new way to say is MR, another way. Well, not really is MR, but to be, where R is, where is something, right? It's iru and aru. We have one way, basically. Japanese says two ways. All right. We're going to review that more than you can believe. But before we do that, let's talk about what we already know about verbs. Because before we can do anything with iru and aru, we need to know how to conjugate them. And we only know how to conjugate one of them right now. So let's talk about regular verbs. We know how regular verbs work. Iku. If you remember the pattern, it goes the final U form, okay? This is U because it's, ends, it's an U sound. Iku, ku. All verbs end in a sound with a U at the end, okay? It can be any verb. Any verb, okay? Wakaru. Iku, wakaru. And even kaeru. These are all regular verbs. Now, I put a little asterisk there because we're going to talk about it in a bit. Kairu is not what we actually... It is a regular verb, but we give it a different name to make more sense here. In just a second, you'll figure it out. Now, we already know one irregular verb. It is kuru. What are, so, so regular verbs are the most common type, and they always follow that pattern of u form changes to e form, and then you add your ending. Remember this? Iku, ikimasu. Wakaru, wakarimasu. Kaeru, kaerimasu. Well, irregular doesn't follow any pattern except its own. So you have to memorize it. And we only learned one. We learned kuru. Okay, and that means to come. And remember, that somehow changes to kimas. It becomes a ki and then a mas, but there's no really good pattern for that. And suru. Now, we're, we don't officially really know suru yet, and we only kind of briefly introduce it in this book, only because there's only two official irregular verbs. Only two. And it's kuru and suru. And now you know all of them. Okay? And as long as you remember that kuru becomes kimas and kimasen, and suru will do later. Okay? Uh, let's look at some more. 
It says regular again. I'm a little bit scared. Okay, Aru. Now, Aru in this lesson is going to be regular. But there are times, I don't want to confuse you, but when we learn informal speech, Aru won't follow the pattern. Until, we, until then, it's exactly like regular. Aru becomes Arimas. No problem. Okay? It's just when we get to the informals in lesson nine. Now, here's a verb type we've not dealt with yet. We call it, in the Japanese Missouri book series, we call it Iru Eru form. Because it rhymes with Iru Eru. Meaning, the last character will be Eru, and the one right before it will be like a Ki, or a Gi, or a Si, okay? Or a Mi. It's always something with an, an Iro, okay? Or the Ero. E, or E, okay? For example, not only does it rhyme with iru, it literally is iru. This is an iru edu verb. An iru edu verb does not change the final u sound into an e. It drops it. We're going to learn that in a second, but it drops it. It gets rid of it. It's a special way. Once you know, this is why you have to know what type the verb is, because if you don't know what type the verb is, you'll say it wrong and the Japanese people won't know what you mean. Okay? Then there is what we're going to call iru eru exception, okay? That means it looks like it's an iru eru because it has a sound like eru or a sound like iru at the end. It rhymes with iru or eru, but it's not. And we already know one, okay? It's kaeru to return. Now, iru eru exception verbs is another name for a regular verb. It's a verb that looks like iru eru, but it really is just regular. I mean, I'm sorry. It's really, not, oh, why do I want to say irregular? It's regular. So it's just kaerimas, right? So nothing different about it from a regular verb. We're only calling it iru eru because once you know what an iru eru verb, your first instinct when you look at that verb is, oh, it's got eru on the end, so it must be iru eru. No. It's not very common to have an iru eru re, uh, exception verb, okay? It's more common that if it ends in an eru or iru sound, it's going to be iru eru, and then you drop the ru. So we're going we're gonna to practice through this, and throughout each lesson we'll be introducing new iru eru verbs, and I will remind you every time it comes up, so don't freak out if you don't remember it now. This is a little bit tricky when you first learn it, but I promise you, I promise you, when I get to the lesson where I go, now watch this, and I talk about how verbs, how iru eru is one of the most important forms, even though now it's very minor, you're going to be excited, trust me. So let's review, let's just review before we move on. Okay, so if you remember, this is the regular pattern, okay? The regular form verbs always take the final u and change it to e form. So, wakaru, wakari, kaeru, kaeri, iku, iki, and then we added our endings, right? Mas, masen, mashita, masen desta. We all remember this, right? This is, this is already like many, many lessons back and we've had some practice, okay? Now, uh, I say many lessons back, but it's really... If you're following the book, it's basically two lessons ago, okay? But in the videos, it's maybe five or six videos ago because we make a lot of videos per lesson sometimes. All right, so let's look at a verb like wakaru. We all know wakaru means to understand. So, wakarimas, I understand. Wakarimasen, I don't understand. Wakarimashita, I have understood, okay? Wakarimasen deshita, I didn't understand, okay? Same thing with iku. Ikimas. I will go. Ikimasen. I won't go or I don't go. Ikimashita. I went. Ikimasen deshita. I didn't go. Okay? Now, new verb in this lesson is aru. And aru is regular until we get to informals. It's a regular verb. So aru becomes ari. Plus its ending, arimas. That means, depending on the situation, it means I have. Okay? We'll just use it. It's really only a have for right now, okay? Uh, arimasen. Don't have. Arimashita. I did have. And arimasen deshita. I didn't have. Okay? Now let's look at some sentences. Oh, it's coming up. Sorry, I got confused. Uh, iru eru verbs have a different pattern. It doesn't change to the e and then add the ending. It drops the ru and adds the ending. So, as you can see, iru becomes e, then you add the stem, and now you have imas. Now in this case, remember, arimas is for things that are not alive. They're for objects. 
For living things, you must use imas. So if I say imas, it can mean I have a living thing, or that living thing is here, because it's to be also. So you can have a girlfriend, or you can have a cat, or your cat can be here, or your cat, or your girlfriend could be here, sorry. And if they're not here, it's imasen. Or if you don't have a living thing, it's imasen. I could say to you, do you have a pet? And the answer would be imasen, I don't have one. Do you have money? Arimasu ka? Don't have one. Don't have any. Arimasen. Okay? It's okay to mess this up. You will mess this up. But Japanese will be confused. Okay, so pay attention. So let's look at the first sentence. Kuruma ga arimasu ka? Now many of you are young and you don't have a car. So this, but, but if you look older, or you're a college student, someone might ask you, are, do you have a car? Kuruma ga arimasu ka? The thing that you're talking about having is marked with ga. It kind of is always that way, okay? Unless you're stressing or emphasizing what we talked about before. Kuruma ga arimasu ka? Do you have a car? I don't have the answer here, but what if you do have a car? Hai, arimasu. Yes, I do have. What if you don't have a car? Iie, arimasen. No, I don't have. Iie, arimasen. What if I wanted to ask you though, do you have a friend? I'm not trying to be rude, I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but do you have a friend? Tomodachi ga imasu ka? Now this sentence can mean do you have a friend, but it also can mean is your friend there? Because it's all context, because this idu verb means to be and to have, it means both, okay? Keep that in mind. You'll get used to it, I promise. What does this mean? Dare ga imasu ka? Dare ga imasu ka? That does not mean who do you have. That makes no sense, really. I mean, that's a very rare case where that would make sense. It can only mean who is there. Who is existing there, right? Who is there? Dare ga imasu ka? If I called home, if I called to my, my friend, and uh, they invited me to the party, and I'm deciding, do I want to go or not to this party? I would say, Dare ga imasu ka? Who's there? And if they said, Jeff, I'm not going. I don't like Jeff. <sighs> Jeff, you know who I'm talking about, Jeff. If Jeff's there, I'm not going. Ikimasen. All right. <laughs> what if Kenji and Yumi were there? Kenji is a boy's name and Yumi is a girl's name. Kenji and Yumi. You have to remember. You have to remember the and particle here. Kenji to Yumi ga imas. Dare ga imasu ka? Kenji to Yumi ga imas. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to go to the party. What if no one's there but the friend still wants you to come? He might just say, Watashi ga imas. I'm here. Notice we didn't say koko because imas, I am. You can't just say, I am, exist. In English, we say, I'm here. So the word here must be there, right? Japanese, you understand that it means there or here. It's implied. You could say, you could say, watashi ga, or watashi wa koko ni imasu. You could say that. Here, this location I am. All right, think about this question. Nani ga arimasu ka? It means what is there, or what do you have? It means both. What do you have, or what is there? Like, let's say uh, we're gonna go to a delicious restaurant. So my friend said it's delicious, but I don't even know what kind of restaurant it is. I could say, nani ga arimasu ka? What is there, right? But what if we got locked in a room and we had to find a way to open up the door and we needed some sort of like knife? I might, well, do you have a knife? Like, what do you have? Nani ga arimasu ka? Now I can use arimasu ka. Could I use imasu ka? No, because knives are not alive. Pizza ga arimasu. This restaurant has pizza. 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 Notice, pizza is a foreign origin word. It comes from Italy or America. I'm not sure which one it came from. Uh, it might have come uh, from Italy to America, but it's possible that Japan got introduced to pizza from America, so... It could be either one, but it is not going to be written in hiragana because it is not Japanese. Pizza. And we don't know hiragana, uh, katakana yet. Pizza ga arimasu. There is pizza. 
what if I wanted to know, like, I can eat, uh, let's see, uh, I know that there's two things at this particular restaurant, but I know depending on the day, they only make one of them. It's either pizza or sushi. I don't know. And my friend went ahead of me, and I need to ask him, well, which one did they have? Which one do they have right now? I'm pausing. I just want you to think about it. Which one do they have? Remember, the choice is pizza or sushi. Well, which one do they have? It has to be dochi. Because there's only two items, remember? Can't be dore. Dore ga arimasu ka would be good if there was more, three or more choices, but there's only two. Well, which one do they have? Uh, my answers to this don't match the question, but let's say I ask my friend to go buy me a shirt. I needed a shirt, and oh, this is really... I swear I did not make this, I didn't make this happen. But <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm wearing this yellow shirt, right? And I wanted to go buy another shirt. And I said, what, I, he said they only have two colors. And I wanted to say, well, which ones do they have? Dochi ga arimasu ka? And he says, aka no ga arimasu. They have a red one. I don't want a red one. I'm not that team, whatever the name of that team is, Valor or Mythic or whatever. I don't want that team's shirt, which is red. Right? So I'm not going to get it. Or he says, Aono ga arimasen. Oh, okay, good. That's good. They don't have the blue one today. Aono ga arimasen. Good. I want the other one. Okay, that's it. There's a lot to take in. This is a very long video. It's very exciting, but very long. Now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to review some things. We're going to learn a little bit more. Just remember, the main thing, two main things you need to know from this video are, Iru for living things. Aru for non-living things, for objects, okay? The other thing is, how do you make an iru eru verb conjugate? And here it is. Here's the hint. Iru eru drop the ru. Iru eru drop the ru. That's what you remember. Always remember to drop the ru. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.